So I'm Stephanie Murray. I'm here to talk about collaborative and cooperative journalism and to hopefully give you some context around what's happening in our industry right now on this topic, hopefully to incentivize you to want to be involved if you're not already doing something that's collaborative or cooperative. And so by collaborative journalism, I do mean working across traditional media boundaries, working across traditional company lines, to work with other organizations to ahead of time share stories, share sources, share tips, share, share leads, to develop content together that otherwise we may not have been able to do at the scale or the impact today because our resources are dwindling. Gone are the days where we have bureaus in every city. And our competition is just different today. We don't compete against each other nearly as much as we used to. Today, by collaborating, we can put the power of this many organizations all together to focus on one story to have an impact, have a big impact on multiple communities and to help solve one problem. Um, and I do think that 2016 will be looked back as a watershed year when it comes to collaborative journalism. Um, this has been going on for a while in many different forms, but um, this year we saw the release of the Panama Papers, which is very significant. Um, also, two projects were awarded Pulitzer Prizes for joint reporting. I think that's significant. Also, there's a lot new, a lot of new development in technology platforms um, and different ways that you can collaborate um, and cooperate with other organizations. And so, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists is definitely one of the leaders, if you don't already know this, um, in collaborative journalism around the world. That's the organization that led the Panama Papers, which um, that uh, first, they were first published in April of 2016. It seems a lot longer than that, but it was just April of last year. And that involved more than 100 media organizations in 80 countries around the world, dozens and dozens and dozens of journalists. It's definitely one of the top examples um, and is the biggest collaboration in history so far. It's also important to point out, I think, ProPublica and their election land project this year, which combined the resources of academic institutions and newsrooms across the country to help monitor the polls on Elections Day. It was a huge lift. And I know Scott Klein said I saw him earlier. Um, great project. Also, the San Francisco Homeless Project. That was 70 media organizations who all focused their efforts on reporting about homelessness in the Bay Area. And they had a focus on solutions, too, which I think is really interesting and key. And I'm from Detroit, so of course I would mention the Detroit Journalism Cooperative, which is five media outlets in Detroit covering the city um, post-bankruptcy. But this whole list is just a tiny list of all sorts of different organizations and places that are collaborating. And I do think it's important to note the two Pulitzer Prizes, because those were both stories that were done collaboratively and had impact. Um, one was in um, Sarasota Herald Tribune and the Tampa Bay Times, their report on Florida mental hospitals, and the second was with the Marshall Project and ProPublica on their in-depth investigation on that rape story. I think it's important also to note that there is more collaboration happening cross-border in Europe. Um, there was a coalition of European news organizations that covered our election this fall. There are a couple of other consortiums that have been developing, and so um, Europe's a little bit behind us, I think, in terms of collaborative reporting, but um, they're getting there. And there are five more things to know before my five minutes is over that I want to make sure to tell you about. One is um, that there are a lot of different models and methods to how collaborative journalism projects can come together. Um, it can involve two. It can involve 200. Um, you can work on the front end together. Sometimes there are other models where you all feed in stories to one location. You're working sometimes on one solution. There are a lot of different ways to do that. And right now, there is new research happening. Earlier this year, um, the Reuters Institute of Oxford released a um, um, study on collaboration. And these two women at Stanford, who are Knight Fellows, are researching collaboration right now, too. Also, it's important to point out that there is some funding for these types of projects. Google News Lab has been a partner on some projects. The Knight Foundation has funded several experimental collaborative reporting projects across the country, so that's important to note, too. Also, I mentioned earlier the tools and technologies. There's a lot being developed here from um, Channel X and what they're doing with public media to Hostwriter, which is based in um, Europe, to even what the New York Press Association is working on now with a content sharing collaboration platform. Um, there's just a lot that's being developed. And I am trying to put together a Collaborative Journalism Summit in spring of next year. Um, I've talked to so many people about this topic, and it's got us so energized. And we want to do more at the Center for Cooperative Media. So I want you to know about that, too. And hopefully, you'll hear more about that summit as I plan it. And I've put a bunch of links and things that I've talked about the last five minutes at this link, bit.ly slash collab reporting. And thank you.